All right, hello everybody. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started today. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about our next topic in unit three, which is gonna be survivorship curves. Let's see if this thing will load up here. All right, cool. All right, so um, last time we talked about reproductive strategies, which were essentially just how organisms reproduce and how, how that affects things like how quickly do they get to their carrying capacity, how long are their carrying capacity. Um, and today we're going to talk about survivorship curves in terms of type 1, type 2, type 3, which kind of go hand in hand with K and R uh, as well. So you see a lot of similar characteristics here between certain types of strategy or survivorship curves and the way that they reproduce. So this right here is a survivorship curve. And essentially what it does is it shows you the percentage of a population that will survive to the maximum lifespan within the organism species. So what does that mean? Well, in order to understand uh, what this graph uh, is telling us, let's go ahead and look at the axes first. So here in the Y axis, we have the percentage of survivals. Uh, so if you were to have, say an example, um, 100 new elephants born in a generation, uh, this is essentially telling you how many of those original 100 are still surviving. So are they 100% alive, 10% alive, 1% alive, or 0.1% alive? So how many of those are surviving? And then down here, we have the percentage of the maximum lifespan. So this is going to be different for every organism, right? Insects uh, can live maybe a few weeks, while tortoises might live hundreds of years. So whatever the maximum lifespan is for that organism, uh, this is how many of them make it all the way to the oldest, okay? Now you'll notice that there are three distinct lines here, uh, and these represent three distinct different types of organisms. So in type one organisms, these are organisms in which uh, the generation that is born, most of them are going to survive for a very long period of time as it relates to their maximum lifespan. So let's go ahead and switch from elephants to humans, because I feel like we can obviously relate to humans a lot more and it might make a little more sense. So in this case, let's say we have 100 humans born in a population, right? Most of the humans are going to survive till 50% of their lifespan. So let's say the maximum lifespan is 120 for a human. I, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but let's just uh, make that it. So most people are going to survive until they're 60. Yes, there are going to be incidences of organisms that die before that. Like there are humans that die very young or die before 60, but a vast majority of people that are born are going to make it 50% of their uh, maximum lifespan. But as you start to approach that maximum lifespan, all of a sudden you're going to have a rapid drop off. So, and this is what we usually see in humans, right? We have tragic accidents and illnesses early on, take out a small percentage, um, but overall most humans will make it all the way to the end of their lifespan and then they all die eventually. Now type three is very different. In type three, uh, there's a lot of reproduction, and the, but a lot of those organisms are going to die early on, and only a few will actually make it all the way to the maximum lifespan. Good example of this are organisms that use seeds to reproduce, so like, like oak trees and stuff like that. They will sprout out tons and tons of seed. Most of those uh, might become plants, uh, but a lot of those saprolines will die young. It could be due to predator-prey relationships or whatever it might be. But a lot of them will die young and only a few will make it to a mature age uh, and then eventually to 100% of its lifespan. And then you have type 2 organisms, which are a combination of both. They're just as likely to die young as they are old um, because they have consistent selective pressures throughout their life. Uh, a good example of type 2 might be like rodents. Uh, rodents are just as likely to die young as they are old. Birds are pretty much type 2 as well. All right, so what are some characteristics of type one, two, and three organisms? Uh, well, type one nurtured their young and they often die from an old age. K selected species tend to be type one. An example would be humans or elephants. Uh, type three organisms do not nurture their young when they are born. Most die young and only a few will make it late in life. So these tend to be our R selected species from our previous lecture. And then type two uh, share traits from both one and three. They have a little bit of investment in young. They might take care of them for a little while, uh, but they have an equal chance of dying young and old. And you can see that example I included, which were rodents. All right, so here's our FRQ. Uh, you're going to be looking at an ancient uh, population of plants and trying to figure out which type you think it belongs to based on the description that is given. So that'll be it for today, and I will see you tomorrow.